Hello everyone, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be talking about the long range meta and what I think is the absolute best. I actually put a ton of time into this video and a lot of, I actually went in and tested all these, found the best attachments for every single weapon that's going to be mentioned in this video. Um, so if you like the content, be sure to drop a like and a comment on the video. And if you want to see more of my YouTube content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon. Um, but let's jump into it and we will talk about what I think are the absolute top long range weapons for season four. Generally when I'm doing these meta videos, I'll always try to focus on uh, what I find are the most important stats to start with, and then I'll get all the weapons that kind of match those being the best stats, and then jump in a game, actually work with the attachments, and you know try out different recoil attachments, different uh, whatever the attachment is that I'm focused on the stat for. Um, I'll mess with those and, and tweak them a little bit. So that's what I did this time. Uh, recoil is always king at range. Hitting your shots is the most important thing for a long range gun, because the more shots you hit, the better your actual effective time to kill is going to be. Um, so up close is a little bit different because it's a lot easier to actually hit your shots um, Just because the targets so much bigger but out at longer ranges the less recoil you have the easier It's gonna be to hit your shots. So I started with recoil went through and got my own personal ranks for these um, I would recommend that you do the same because it's gonna be a little bit different for everyone It's gonna be different for people on controller. Uh, I am mouse and key. I am working on getting better at controller I'm, I've gotten decent already, but um, it's gonna take me a little bit more time just so I can one, have something different to play. I don't just like playing Warzone on mouse and key all the time. And two, um, I think it'll really help my content because I'll have a feel for what controller players want compared to mouse and key players. And I know a ton of you are on controller. Um, so anyway, I ranked them based on recoil, found the guns that I felt like had the best recoil to start with, got all of those listed, and then also um, used true game data to find the bolt velocity for all these weapons because that's another big factor in long range engagements is um, if, if they are changing direction, the faster your bullet velocity, the easier it is to adapt to that and hit those shots. Even if they're just running straight, the less you have to lead them, um, is always going to help you hit more shots. So that was another stat I wanted to have on here. And then obviously time to kill is very important as well. So I've got all three of those things on here. Now, obviously every stat matters. So movement speed, aim down sight time, um, strafe speed, strafe steadiness, how much the gun bobs around while you're, while you're strafing. All those things are also important, but these three just kind of are like the kings of what makes a long range gun good. Um, so instead of comparing every single stat and trying to you know, come up with that, really with these three, you can get a very, very good idea of what's gonna be the best. So looking at this right away, recoil rank number one, this is gonna be the burst UGM. This is what I just made a video on. I literally went and played that night. Uh, when I made that video, I hadn't really used it very much yet. It was one of those things where I built the gun went into plunder and tried it and instantly knew that it was like insane. So I was able to make a video before even really having experience with the gun just because I could tell from the recoil and the visual recoil and the bullet velocity and everything that it was going to be extremely good. Um, so I made that video and then literally later that night I went and got a 32 kill game on Caldera, which is like my second best game ever. Um, the first day using the gun. So yes, this gun's insane purely because the recoil has good bullet velocity, also has good time to kill. And it's going to have an insane time to kill if you can get two of those headshots into that burst. We'll go look at the TTK charts in a second, but I just wanted to go through these. Um, KGM40 got a buff in the recent patch. It's actually decent now in terms of time to kill. It's still going to be the, like the slowest out of this group, um, but it's at least semi-competitive. And it also has the highest bullet velocity, so it's pretty easy to hit your shots. Um, the bar with the 40, uh, Bowser 40 round mag, really this is about the same for me as the NZ. I hit just as many shots with both of these. Um, so I'm going to change this to a 3 for the NZ. Basically, if, if I think a recoil is really similar, I'll give them a tie in terms of their rank. Um, so yeah, 8mm Clouser Bar has a lot of visual recoil, but after the first couple shots, it literally like recenters to the same point. There's virtually no recoil. Um, the NZ is the opposite, where the first few shots with my build have literally no recoil, and then it starts to have some recoil. Um, so really, for long-range engagements, I they're very similar for me. Um, it's nice to have no initial recoil like the NZ, because that means that... If someone's mounted on something or sitting still, you can literally hit your first, you know, four shots on their head and down them before they can react, which is really frustrating when it happens to you. But obviously, it's a benefit if you have the gun. But like I said, the bar is the opposite. So if someone's moving at range, the bar is going to be a little bit better because the first few shots, you might hit a couple of them and then the recoil really steadies out and you can really start to hit those shots as they're moving. Whereas the NZ after those first few shots is going to start getting a little bit more crazy. Full velocity is pretty similar between the two. The bar has a slight, slight advantage. Um, the UGM-8 with the 125 round Sakura mag has phenomenal time to kill. Um, and it has something really unique about it that we're going to talk about when we get to the actual time to kills. 
The recoil is also pretty manageable. It has a slight, basically it has like a little, a little like curve right at the start. After the first like three shots, there's this little curve like for three or four bullets. And then after that, it's very straight. So um, for a long range gun, you're probably gonna hit a few of those first shots and then you're gonna miss some during that little curve. And then after that, you'll start hitting again. And like I said, phenomenal time to kill, really good bullet velocity. Um, Cooper Carbine got a buff in this recent patch as well. Um, so with these attachments, I built these for the recoil rank. I built these all out how I like them most for recoil. Uh, like I said, I actually got into a plunder game and tried them all and tried different combinations of attachments. Um, you see in these notes columns, I put like, you know, initial recoil was the worst for the KGM 40. So what I did was I would stack the right attachments to make my initial recoil less and make it so I could really hit shots. And you need to try that for yourself. Um, and it just takes a few minutes. Honestly, you just drop into plunder. Put a bunch of attachments on and shoot like a window that's 200 meters away or something like that on a high high zoom like 6x and see how you can control that and if you can't really put those shots in that window then look at what happened and and try to decide was that initial recoil that was the problem was it horizontal recoil was it vertical recoil was it sustained recoil and then just tweak your attachments a little bit so you can actually hit those shots in that window that's what i did for this video and and uh, got these recoil ranks from that but anyway cooper carbine really low bullet velocity the lowest bullet velocity of all of them Slightly lower than the NZ, a little bit lower than the bar, um, but it has really good time to kill, and it recoil is kind of annoying to me, but after the first few shots, there's virtually none. So even though this is like middle of the pack, all of these guns have really low recoil. That was like the initial factor to put them on this list was that they had low recoil. So even though this ranks five for me, it still has very little recoil. Um, XM4 and Vargo are the only two guns that made the list that aren't from Vanguard. Um, you can see... The, the recoil is really, really similar. So the Vargo basically has a little bit weirder recoil pattern. It kind of goes out to the left a little bit and then comes back to the right, whereas the XM4 is kind of straight up and then goes to the right a little bit, which is a very traditional recoil pattern. That's kind of what we saw in the vast majority of the guns from Modern Warfare, like the original Warzone guns, um, kind of went straight up and then up to the right a little bit. And the XM4 just kind of matches that. So it's a really comfortable feeling recoil for me, very easy for me to control, but the Vargo does have less visual recoil. Um, they do both have very good bullet velocity compared to a lot of these other guns because uh, they don't have those mags. Like a lot of the Vanguard guns have magazines that slow down that bullet velocity. Um, but yeah, another note is that the XM4 and the Vargo both don't have that 3 to 6x optic that the Vanguard guns all have. Um, that isn't a huge deal, but it is kind of annoying because that, that 6x is really useful, especially on these low recoil guns. If someone's really far away and say you can mount on a tree or a fence or something, get that recoil down even more and then there's certain guns like the ugm8 the kgm40 you can actually just use the 6x without even being mounted and that's because they have so little recoil so it would be nice to have those on here and that is a pretty uh pretty decent sized negative to the uh to these two guns and then last up is the whitley i included this because it has phenomenal time to kill um but the recoil is really bad so i couldn't find a build that was even competitive at all with these other ones in terms of recoil so that's why it didn't just get an 8, it got a 9 because it's quite a bit worse than the rest of the guns on the list. But it does have really good bullet velocity and really good time to kill. Really quickly before I get into the time to kills, I want to show you guys um, a really cool feature that I don't think a lot of people knew we had. I did, didn't do a good job of publicizing it, but um, basically you can build out all your weapons on TGD on your profile. Um, up to 10 builds for free and 10 comparisons for free that you can save to your profile. Uh, we'll be upping builds probably to 15 or 20 free comparisons, but anyway... Um, you can connect your Twitch account now as well. So if you build out your gun, um, I'm just going to select something random, AK-74U, and I'll just put like one attachment on it to speed this up. Um, then you just save the weapon build, and I'll just say um, AK-74U, and then note my favorite 74U. Save weapon build. It'll be saved to your profile. If you come back to here, it'll load up all your saved guns. And then if I scroll over to the right, you're going to see that new build and you can just add that command. So whatever your Twitch channel is, once you've linked that up, uh, we worked with quick stats bot, which is a website for player stats to connect to, um, connect to your Twitch account, which is super cool. Uh, and then you just add AK 74 U here. You can add whatever commands you want, even multiple commands. Um, you can also give it a weapon category. So I've defined like six or seven different categories that I think kind of, um, pretty much define every type of play style. So you have, I have this on dark mode, so it looks weird, but uh, sniper support, versatile main, that's something that would be pretty much good as a sniper support. Complement, long range main, this would be what this video is on, just a long range main weapon. Versatile SMG would be a really good sniper complement. 
aggressive SMG, this is what you would pair with a uh, long range main weapon. Long range sniper, this is more like, you know, your ZRGs, the one shot sniper. And then aggressive sniper would be your close range snipers like the Swiss or the Car 98. Um, so all this is on, uh, on TGD. I think people didn't know about this very much. You can um, edit the build, you can view the build, you can share the build with a link, um, you can favorite builds. Uh, this has been on here for a long, long time. I just haven't done a good job of publicizing it. So I just wanted to show you guys that before I get into time to kill. So for the time to kill charts, we've got Caldera, 300 health, full plate, uh, combination shot location, and then we can just compare all these different weapons. I built them out with anything that would affect time to kill or bullet velocity, um, but I didn't do the full builds here. I'll give you guys those at the end. Um, so you can see right off the bat, we have the UGM-8 with the no burst barrel is the very first uh, time to kill out at range. And that's because with a single headshot, which is generally what this set of percentages will give you is basically like one headshot and, you know, and a few leg shots and stuff mixed in there as well. But this gives a really good idea of um, how, you know, putting in any sort of headshots or leg shots or anything will come out. And this is reduced in this case because one headshot does so much damage on the UGM-8. Um, so has the best TTA out of range, which is crazy because it has pretty good recoil and really good bullet velocity as well. So this is absolutely um, a top weapon right now. The Whitley, again, Whitley's recoil is really bad compared to most of these other options on here. So even though it has a great time to kill, it's effective time to kill out of range probably won't be that good. I've got the Bruin on here as well, just because I wanted to have one gun from Modern Warfare. Um, the Bruin and the Grau are both okay right now. They're not going to be competitive because of a bunch of different reasons like mobility and aim down sight time and visual recoil and things like that, but they're okay. So if you have those unlocked, um, Grau and Bruin would probably be my top two recommendations for long range Modern Warfare guns. Um, next up we have the Cooper Carbine. So this magenta color is a Cooper Carbine. Um, not a lot to say about that. It's just a really easy to control gun and it, it has good time to kill now after the, after the recent buffs, unfortunately it does have that low bullet velocity. Next up, we have the NZ41 with the 6.5 Sakura 50 round mag. Uh, basically the same time to kill as Cooper Carbine. Uh, recoil is very similar. It's just really, uh, most of the recoil is later on in your magazine with the NZ41, whereas the Cooper is the opposite. Most of the recoil is up at the start. Um, so it just depends on your personal preference. Cooper's also probably going to have better mobility and ADS, um, things like that. They both have pretty similar bullet velocities. So they're both absolutely top tier choices right now. And we have the XM4 and the Vargo right here. Um, at, the, at range, they literally have the same TTK, so they have the same time to kill, the same bullet velocity, and very similar recoil, so you're pretty much, when you decide between the two, you're pretty much just picking whichever one um, feels better to you in terms of visual recoil and whichever recoil pattern you can control better. Um, up here at the top, we have the bar in orange, and then the UGM with the burst barrel, and again, this is because with these shot location percentages, it's not quite enough to get two headshots, but if you mix two headshots in, which is very common with this gun because it has such little recoil, um, it's very easy to hit headshots. So if you hit two headshots out of your eight total shots, the time to kill drops all the way down to the fastest um, of all of these guns with the burst barrel. So that's why it's so good is that even if you don't hit that headshot, it has no recoil at range and good bullet velocity. So it doesn't have a good time to kill if you don't hit those two headshots compared to a lot of these other guns but it's so much easier to hit those shots that the effective time to kill at range is going to be much better. Um, and then if you do actually happen to hit those two headshots, all of a sudden it has no recoil and the best time to kill of everything. So that's what makes it so insanely good compared to all of these guns. KGM-40 has been in last for a long time, but it is still in last in terms of time to kill. But like we showed in the comparisons for recoil and bullet velocity, it has some of the best recoil and some of the best bullet velocity, which means you're going to hit more shots, which means your effective time to kill is going to be a lot better than what this chart shows. So the actual time to kill out at range is gonna be um, compared to the fastest. This is 726 versus uh, 969. So it's about 200 milliseconds faster uh, time to kill for the for the UGM, which is the fastest time to kill compared to the slowest, which is the KGM-40. That's gonna be like two or three shots, depending on the gun. Obviously it depends on fire rate, but if you miss two or three shots with the UGM, that you would have hit with the KGM-40, then all of a sudden it catches it in time to kill. So that's why recoil and accuracy and visual recoil and all these things are, are king at range because even though the time to kill can be quite a bit different, um, just missing a couple shots that you would have hit with something else will make the other thing have a better time to kill. With all of that in mind, how do I actually rank these for myself personally? Um, I think the UGM-8, the, the new LMG, is the best long range gun in the game, both with, with the burst barrel and without the burst barrel. Um, just for a 
all the reasons we've gone over in this video. I personally like the burst barrel more just because it's easier to hit your shots at extreme ranges, has no recoil whatsoever, um, and you can still get an insane time to kill if you hit two of those headshots, um, so you feel rewarded if you do have really good aim. Um, but even without that, I think the the regular UGM-8 is fantastic as well, has amazing time to kill all the time. You don't actually have to hit those two headshots, um, so it might be a more consistent choice for mid-range, but uh, just the extreme ranges that some call their engagements happen, I feel like the burst barrel for me personally is better. Um, and then I have a tie for third with the bar and the NZ-41. I think both of these are exceptional. I think for most people, they'll probably like the NZ a little bit more, but I've... I just love the bar. The visual recoil doesn't bother me on it for some reason, but I know it does for other people. Um, so I would say for most people, the NZ is probably still a little bit better and still probably the third best choice behind these two UGM-8s. Um, and then in fourth, I've got a tie again between the Cooper Carbine and the KGM-40. Uh, KGM-40 obviously has much worse time to kill than the Cooper, but it makes up for that by having much, much higher bullet velocity. Um, and in my opinion, it also has really fantastic recoil, much better recoil even than the Cooper Carbine. Um, so that's why I think they're kind of tied there. I think the effective time to kill of both is going to be really similar for me out at range. Um, and then in fifth, I have a tie again with the XM4 and the Vargo. Again, they're basically the same gun. Like, they're so, so similar. So it's just personal preference, which one you like more. Um, Whitley, the recoil is just too bad to be good on Caldera. Um, even though it has good bullet velocity and phenomenal time to kill, uh, it's going to be last place for me. All right, so on to recommended builds, UGM-8. Um, I don't know if this is the exact same build I had in my video uh, yesterday or two days ago, whenever that was, but it's very, very similar. If not, I find that for the burst UGM-8 visual recoil and horizontal, you know, shake and, and like visual bounce almost are the, mo the most important things. With this stock and brace, the initial recoil is so low that this gun basically has no recoil, um, regardless of what other attachments you pick. It's just more of like a visual thing and, and some stuff like that. So we've got MX Silence here. Full of velocity damage range, recoil, burst barrel, 3 to 6x is going to be the pick on all these just because it's so versatile. Um, again, if you're on console, maybe like a 1.5x like red dot sight would be better for you because if you're on console, you have so much more zoom. Uh, 1.5x would be roughly similar to someone on PC at like 115 FOV using a 3x. Um, so again, if you're on console, maybe use like a 1.5x on this instead. Um, this is my favorite stock for sure. Initial recoil with no hurting to anything else. And it also helps with your uh, walking your ADS movement speed and ADS steadiness while you're uh, strafing, which is really nice because this thing has such crazy range that you can actually use that 6x optic, um, which means that because you're so zoomed in, the the strafing, like the, the way the, the gun is like shaking as you're you know moving is pretty dramatic. So anything that helps, that's really nice. Um, under barrel, again, horizontal recoil and like visual shake. I feel like the strife help, helps the most with that. Um, so I go with the strife on this. Uh, again, I talked about this in my other video, but the mags are your choice uh, between the 303 British, the 125 round Sakura, and the 303 British 50 round. Um, I've pretty much settled on the 125. I think it's just nice to have a giant magazine, and it it just works extremely well with this gun. All three of those are very, very similar, but if you want something that's more AR-like, you can potentially use the 50 round fast mag, um, and then the British 75 round is kind of right in the middle of those two. Rear grip, again, horizontal recoil, kind of just feels like king on this gun specifically. Um, so we go with hatched grip. This gives horizontal and a little bit of vertical, as well as some flinch resistance. Um, and then for perk, because this is a burst fire gun, uh, you can either use brace or surveil. Um, it's a toss up, honestly. Like, surveil is going to give you better bowl velocity, which means it's going to be easier to hit your shots. But brace obviously helps with that initial fire recoil a bunch. And this is a burst gun, so pretty much every burst. Um, is initial firing recoil. So they're both great choices. Honestly, like I said, the recoil is so low with this thing that you can you can definitely use surveil and have no problem hitting shots at 200 meters. So I tend to go with surveil, but brace is also a great option. Um, and then for the uh, the regular version of this that's not burst, it's just the only change for me. I went through and tested this, like actually in game. The only change for me is switching to that barrel. Everything else is the same except the perk, which I do recommend brace for the full auto version because like i said this has a little bit of a little bit of a little hitch after the first like three or four shots and that should still be in the window of brace helping those first few shots um so that'll reduce that a bunch and then the problem with the hitch is that it has a very big like deviation and horizontal recoil for just a couple shots um so again we still want strife angled and hatch grip for that horizontal recoil help everything else is the same same reasons just a fantastic fantastic gun
All right, next up is the bar. So my bar build's been pretty similar for a long time. I tweaked it a little bit for this video, I think. Um, but as I noted, the initial recoil is the worst for me. So remove stock helps with initial recoil for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, but it hurts uh, sustained fire. But again, even with this on there, the initial recoil is the hardest part to control about the bar. So that's why you use stippled grip. That helps with your initial recoil. Um, and then obviously hard scope is going to reduce that sustained recoil essentially because after your ADS for about half a second hard scope kicks in and really helps with your recoil um, 30 uh, 30 inch barrel just for bullet velocity recoil MX silencer for bullet velocity and recoil hand stop because this gun does have vertical recoil so I tend to like hand stop for any gun that has like a lot of you know vertical recoil just because it seems to help the most carver would help a little bit more but carver um, hurts your aim down sight time and movement speed and stuff like that and we just don't want that um, so Hand stops tends to be the go-to for guns with vertical recoil. Uh, magazine, the BMGs are okay, but the fire rate's just so slow that it's really unforgiving if you ever miss a shot. So I still stick with the Clauser uh, 40 round. Obviously, you'll get a bunch more bullet velocity with the, the 50 BMG mags, but I just think Clauser overall is quite a bit better. The NZ41 build for me has been the same for a long time. So um, essentially, the first few shots with this build will have no recoil, and then after that it has a little bit of horizontal, but still not very much uh, vertical. I forgot to change this to uh, hatched grip, but we've got the MX silencer. I switched from the burst to the orb weaver um, for this patch because they finally gave the orb weaver the bullet velocity it was supposed to have. So basically, the trade off between the burst and the orb weaver is you get slightly faster fire rate with the burst, but you're going to have more bullet velocity with the uh, 360 BC and better recoil with the 360. So for me, for a long range gun, I tend to prefer the, the orb weaver, but if you want something that's a little bit more effective, you know, in the mid range, close range, then the burst is going to be a better choice. Um, but again, the recoil is going to be a little bit worse and you're going to have slightly less bullet velocity as well. They're both great choices though. For stock, I just found that sustained recoil is what this gun struggles with the most. So I really like the uh, Mark III SC because it helps with that sustained recoil and doesn't have too many big cons. It hurts your movement speed a little bit, but I've tried these all out. And to me, I just come back to the Mark III every time. It just feels a little bit better. Uh, like I said, Sustained fire, there's quite a bit of like uh, horizontal deviation still with this gun. So strife angled again helps with that a lot. So that's why we pick that. Same magazine for recoil control. Um, also ups the fire rate a little bit. Lengthen for bullet velocity, uh, hatched grip, vertical recoil, and the most horizontal recoil of all of the rear grips. And again, this has that, that horizontal deviation. So that's why I like that. Um, I think I've recommended in the past sometimes some different things than brace. Uh, because it seems like brace actually increases the sustained firing recoil on this, but I do think it's worth using even though it does that, because the initial firing recoil is literally not non-existent if you use brace. Like the first four shots literally do not move, so that means that if someone's mounted or really long range, you can hit them, down them before they even know what's happening, because you just have to aim for the head and you'll hit all your shots. KGM40, we've got MX silencer, the biggest, heaviest, least recoil barrel. Um, tried out these different stocks, and to me, the 22G padded felt the best. Um, it also helps your movement speed, which is awesome. Uh, it does hurt your ADS time, unfortunately, but it's I think it's the best stock for long range. Um, horizontal recoil felt like the worst part of this gun out at longer ranges, so strife angled and hatched grip again for that same reason. Um, there's a bunch of different mags here. I use the default um, the default magazine, basically the default ammunition size. So this is 8mm Clauser. 60 bullets with this will go a long way for you. Um, the smaller mag is okay, but it's just only 40 bullets, which is kind of annoying. And then the bigger mag makes the recoil make it, you know, not so great. So I think, I really think the default ammo is probably the best choice for, uh, for the KGM-40. Um, the initial recoil is the worst part of the KGM-40. It has very, very little sustained recoil, even without using tight grip. So that's why I use brace. But again, you should try these out yourself and decide between tight grip and brace. Me personally, brace definitely felt quite a bit better. The Cooper is one of those guns that, as long as you pick three attachments, is just going to be pretty much good no matter how else you put like what other attachments you put on it so we got the mx silencer cooper custom barrel and the nine millimeter 60 round mag the other mags just either make the recoil too bad or just they just don't seem worth it to me so i really think the nine uh, millimeter 60 round is the way to go for this um so the build that i settled on for myself um was basically just a combination of all different you know types of recoil so the cooper 45 rs is really nice because it helps with initial firing recoil and your aim down sight time it does hurt your sustained firing recoil but the cooper uh, like I mentioned, as we were going through the actual rankings, the initial recoil is the worst, and after that, it has very, very little. Um, so that's why I like this barrel or this uh, stock, just because it helps with initial, 
hurts your sustain a little bit, but we can make up for that with other attachments. We've got the hand stop for both vertical and horizontal recoil. Um, the pine tar tends to be the best for vertical recoil of all the rear grips. Um, you could potentially use stippled if you wanted initial firing recoil. Like I mentioned, that's the worst part of this gun. Um, but pine tar is going to help everywhere, which I think, I think that might be better in this case. But like I said, literally rubber, um, uh, pine tar, stippled, hatched, all four of those grips are going to be great on this gun. Like you need to just try them and pick which one feels the best to you because I can't really tell you. It's going to depend on how you control recoil and you know what feels the best to you. Hatched grips for horizontal. Rubber is a nice balance between vertical and horizontal. Pine tar is going to be mostly vertical. Um, and then stippled initial. And then obviously polymer is sustained. So there's a bunch of good options in there. Just try them out with each individual gun and see like what part of the recoil feels the worst to your shots during the, during the firing of the weapon. So for me on this one, initial is the worst. So that's why I really like the 45 RS barrel or stock. And then I just kind of give it really low recoil everywhere else with tight grips can make up for the 45 RS having worse sustained pine tar helps everywhere hand stop helps everywhere. The barrel and the muzzle both help everywhere. So uh, this is a really, really good build. I think the Cooper is, has been good for a long time, but they also just buffed it. Uh, so it's even better now. I probably don't even need to make this part of the video, but the Vargo and XM4, same build we've always had for the uh, Black Ops Cold War long range guns, screw suppressor, task force barrel, axial arms 3X, that's NAS grip, which is the, uh, usually the last grip, but in this case it is the fifth grip. Um, and then this, the fourth magazine pretty much always has the best balance of magazine capacity and aimed on sight penalty. So same exact build for the XM4 since it's also a Black Ops Cold War gun, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, good guns, balanced, just kind of fit into the long range meta nicely right now. All right, thank you so much for watching. That's really all, all I wanted to cover. Um, kind of a definitive guide to the meta, I think. Kind of really went over every weapon in the game when I was making this and tried them all out myself. Uh, and I think... My rankings were really accurate for the vast majority of people. Again, you need to try them out yourself to really decide what you're going to like the most. But I think if you just want to follow my rankings, that's going to be pretty good for most people. The one thing is a lot of people probably will prefer an automatic weapon over a burst. So in that case, you would probably rank the UGM-8 with the default standard barrel that doesn't make it burst. Uh, you're number one. But anyway, I hope you guys found this interesting and informative and useful. And I appreciate all the support you guys give me so much. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video.